I hate it is this early in my shift and I'm already up on a, an apparent shooting scene. Complete with police tape and everything. I guess the beautiful weather. Love this theater in downtown Overland Park. Downtown Overland Park still has some small town charm left in it. That might be changing as developers are busily throwing up these luxury condos so called <laughs> and if it's if all we're building is luxury condos where are the rest of us gonna live and there's still enough of the 1950s 1960s vibe here to actually attract the downtown condos but you know once you get rid of it all there won't really be any reason to want to stay here the recurring theme because you know when there's blood in the water meaning there's money to be made People will stop at nothing to squeeze every last bit of profitability out of something until you just squeeze the life out of the whole deal and then move on. But here's downtown, and this is what I mean. And just, you know, look at this downtown here. Again, I don't think any of this is really that old. It probably goes back to the, to most of the 40s. There's a huge part right here that burned down. A big fire. We actually covered it one morning. But they rebuilt it, tried to build it true to what it was. The peanut on Santa Fe. And uh, let's turn right here. And look at this iconic Googie sign for uh, a Chinese restaurant. Dragon in Benito. Uh oh. Donuts. Ah. Resist. Must resist. I don't even see what the donuts are. I saw that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Interurban Art House. Um, there was an interurban line ran through all of Johnson County, and uh, people may have heard of it. It's called the Strang Line. It's a, a strange name, but actually, it's the I believe named after the founder of the line. The last name, um, you know, and another Johnson County name that some people struggle with. I think it's hilarious. Flum. And some people look at it it's spelled P-F-L-U-M-M, -M, I believe. And people look at it and go, P Flum, what? Flum? <laughs> How do you say that? Pa Flum? No, it's Flum. The P is silent. And it's also, I believe, a family name, a historic name from Johnson County. But, uh, yeah, last week I went to um, the Snack Shack and maybe they've moved from here. 
because the snack shack used to be right over there. I do believe it's another view of downtown. There used to be a lot of businesses along here that I, there was a couple of places I used to go to and I've torn them down, torn the building down to build these, you know, luxury condos. And I'm sure they, they're eyeballing this, this side too. And it was kind of like the, uh, the people who had run these businesses, small businesses, by the way, had been, uh, there for a long time and and then uh, I went in and, and they seemed to be very unhappy and they said, well, our landlord has raised our rent ridiculously high. We can't afford to be here anymore. And they're doing it because they're being bought out so they could tear everything down. So it goes. Anyway, it's downtown Overland Park. I hope that the, the city leaders can balance the need for growth with the need for preservation because preservation is very important without preservation you can kiss growth goodbye you, you destroy you flatten everything it's like the the uh, the stuff that's been preserved is a reason why there is growth in the first place and then when you get rid of everything and make it all uh, milk toast, then you know people will soon tire of it and leave, and you'll be left with nothing but bills and negative growth. It's happening everywhere. So anyway. Going up Metcalf, go return my TV and head home. Woohoo! Well, let me tell you, some days you just never know. Way off in the distance there is an Amtrak train that hit a dump truck at an unguarded train crossing here southwest of Marceline, Missouri. Pretty busy out here covering it. You've got so much equipment that I can't get my zoom lens and other tripods, so iPhone will have to do. Now that's what it looks like, and it's a mess. I really feel for the people that were hurt and killed on that train. And this is what the other mess looks like, the coverage of it. So, media feeding frenzy. Got to go make the donuts. 
I've been coming here to Union Station at night since the uh, Amtrak crash. Just kind of hanging out here to listen to the scanner and you know, keep an eye on any train movements to see if there's anything new here. Kind of holding down the fort.
good Dwayne. The missus is taking her big test today. And hopefully she'll do all right with it. And we can be done with this nightmare. This has been a ridiculous... I don't even want to go there. So in the meantime, I took her... Well, she drove, but I went with her. And we had a little lunch. And she's taking her test. And I have a couple hours to kill, so... I remember this antique mall, so I'll give it a try. So let me take this opportunity to do a little driving tour of Platte City. Coming right into downtown here. It's getting to be a warm one, low 90s today. After we've had a bit of a respite from the hot. There's a courthouse over there on the right. been here a few times but I don't remember there being <laughs> a whole lot down here flower and gift barber and beauty it's some interesting old houses down here and you know what I think is pretty funny is Platte City, the main street just comes to an end. Right here at, uh, there's a big anchor. Let's see if I can sort of read the Platte City, William McClung Paxton. It's about the founding of Platte City with the Platte Purchase. Ben Farrell Platte County Museum. There's the courthouse over there. Bee Creek. Oh man, there's a guy on the roof there. He looks hot. a round fellow like me. With no shirt. <laughs> yeah, the last time I was here, some things that were here are gone and just some new things moving in. Hop shop antiques coming soon. There's a coffee shop that I saw. It said New Orleans Coffee Shop. Brewery, wine, and bar. Bee Creek. Uh, that looks cafe and bakery. I was going to say it looked like a restaurant. Platte City Flower and Gift. So no, you know, like kind of coolish. Coffee house, hangout, downtown. The city has a bit of a shift where the main, you know, this is like the business slash government district and the main thoroughfares are over to our south and kind of to the west. It kind of loops around. And so, and that is, uh, what is it? Uh... 92, Missouri 92. So, you know, the downtown is kind of the, where people, you know, residential and not many people really come back here unless they want to come here. It's not like the main street is the main thoroughfare anymore. Especially the way this town just kind of ends here because there's a the river was it Platte River right right to the west oh man this town has a Dollar General really wow who would have thunk this town's too big to have a Dollar General PJ's coffee there it is next to the DQ DQ all right Here we go. P.J. 
J's Coffee of New Orleans. Is it even open? We'll find out. Open till 6 p.m. Ugh. All right. We're here. We're queer. Get used to it. <laughs> Mocha protein shake. Beautiful weather for the first day of July. And I'm at the airport doing holiday travel. Coffee. Starbucks. It's pretty good. That's all they have in the airport. This is our typical live setup. Live at Southwest, like we always are. But today I'm with. Me, myself, and I. We do love our airport here in Kansas City. It's unique. And I think it was actually designed with the future in mind, but uh, that's controversial subject matter. They're building a brand new terminal, for better or worse. People in the city are very excited about a new terminal. It's an effort to make this more of an international airport. It is an international airport. But I think there's only like one or two airlines that are really international. And the rest are more or less domestic. But it was designed around three terminals that are circular. They make kind of like a crescent shape. And then um, they tore down Terminal A. So now it's two circular terminals. And then there's going to be one all-encompassing terminal. And I think their plans are to um, close down and then demolish the old terminals that were built in the late 60s, early 70s. There's the new terminal right ahead of us. And, uh, I don't know. I think it can be built around what exists already and put the old terminals to other uses or have kind of a... I envisioned a, a crescent building attaching the ends of these terminals and the crescent building would be the loading and unloading. And then the... Uh, the the crescents, the terminals themselves, would be the secured areas. But they uh, they don't like that. They want the uh, upstairs, downstairs thing. I believe downstairs being arrivals and upstairs being departures is, I guess, the standard. And what am I to say or, you know, be an armchair expert on that? I, I don't know. It's what they have everywhere else. Um, I've been to a lot of airports in the world, traveled, and some of the best airports I've been to, I think the most impressive ones I've seen are Hong Kong, I think Incheon is really good, I've been to Narita, uh, what else, I've been to it, I can't remember right now off the top of my head, um, another Japanese airport and both of them were really good and the funny thing is um, you go to those airports they are designed to be international terminals as a matter of fact you can find your way around them really easily uh, everything has is written in multiple languages including English and a lot of people there can speak English okay let's let's talk about the worst bar none airport in the world as far as I'm concerned and that is LAX it's designed very poorly and very unaccommodating. And people get confused and lost in that airport all the time. It forces you out of the terminal buildings to get from one terminal to the other. And I even consider the old uh, Aquino Airport in Manila 
And that one was pretty bad because you had to take a bus, a crowded, hot bus, because it was open air from the domestic to the international, international to domestic. That was pretty bad, too. But I guess my bias against those terminals is because of the, uh, the weights. I had to wait six hours at both of those, LAX and Aquino. And LAX was horrible because everything was broken down. And there were so many languages being spoken, including English. And nobody could communicate with each other. And nobody coordinated. And it, you just couldn't find your way around. And uh, try and try and figure out how to get around there. And people aren't even speaking English, you know. In America. Um... In 1981, we visited Heathrow. That was horrible. But in 2005, my wife and I visited Heathrow again. And, no, 2015, we visited Heathrow again. And it was actually excellent. Good access to their uh, underground and good coordination between. And it wasn't that confusing. Um... What other terminals? Detroit's terminal, uh, the Northwest Terminal, which is, I guess it's a headquarters city, was beautiful. Dallas was eh. I mean, I love the tram system for Dallas. Um, Atlanta was okay. Interesting airport. It seems like it's a bunch of islands underneath the runways and you travel around via a tram system. And I think Hong Kong is the same way. And the interesting thing about the Asian airports is like what I've said about um, Japan. Is that they're very international terminals. Uh, You can find your way around easily. All the signs are written in multiple languages. And there are people around who can help you. Been to the... Was it the... Phoenix or Tucson Airport, I can't remember. And it was okay, just kind of a modern monstrosity, I think. In San Francisco, I prefer San Francisco to LA, which is bad because the airlines seem to prefer, at least the Asian ones, prefer LA to San Francisco. But San Francisco is um, very nice, pretty accommodating. Kind of old, but... And, uh... Way back in the late... Early 80s... We did Chicago... O'Hare... And then, uh... A couple of times we traveled through O'Hare... And that was pretty good... And in the late 90s... I did, uh... Um... Decatur... Commuter Airport to St. Louis Lambert. Lambert is interesting, but kind of aging and not extremely easy to get around, I think, sometimes, or at least back in the 1997 when I traveled there. Anyway, my airport roundup. Time to go on to my next assignment. Woohoo! Just got done with the police slash mayor of Kansas City press or press conference in front of the police headquarters on the dangers of shooting your guns in the air on July 4th. I mean, that just goes without saying, but that's my opinion. So now I'm bringing it all back to the ranch. And we'll see what else they have for us today. So, spent all morning at the airport. I guess it still is morning. And now we're downtown. Downtown Kansas City, Missouri. Cross traffic does not stop here. 
lot better. Skeet across here. Uh, and here's the federal building up here behind this gas station that my mother used to. She was in charge of security when she retired that building. But anyways, time to get on back. My last story of the day, I hope, is this car is taking out some power lines. It was on its side and uh, I don't know the state of the driver or passengers. The power company is here and the road is completely blocked east to west. What's this called? Little Blue Road, I believe. This is actually, I think part of it's the Jefferson Highway. But they at least have to get this car out of here, which they have almost done. and. Possibly have to fix the power poles, power lines. I'm back to pick up the Navion. They say the cable got wrapped around the drive shaft or something, and it's gonna cost me $120. So. All right, back in the Navion, they fixed the brake. $129. The brake was uh, not operating when we got it back, and I think it's something they did, and they're charging us for it, but what can you do? I hope there isn't anything else that goes wrong that's related to the old, the other, the repair that well, cost us $4,000. And uh, now I'm on to uh, Worst Buy. I'm here to look at the Garmin camera. Second try, the other one didn't have what I was looking for. So yeah, I got this uh, Garmin here to help with my uh, time lapses actually. For the trip, hopefully, plane lapses. And, uh, yep, the Navion ran okay, no problems. And we have, uh, working brake, so, woohoo! Come on, donkeys, come on! Decided to get some, uh, you, know, you know, what? Coffee. And doggies, right, dogs? Jimmy, what's up, pup? He's fixated on something. The birds over there. Walking the dogs. Just poured on an early Saturday evening. Hey, how you doing? This is Kansas City on a Saturday night, July 4th weekend. And it's pretty crazy compared to the week, which isn't saying much. We have a Liberty Memorial fireworks display going on. It's going to scare this doggy in the back here. Right, Stella? You're already scared, aren't you? Scared! Fourth of July is not a holiday for dogs, right? Right, Jimothy? 
Jimmy thrives on chaos. Right, Jimmy? You like chaos, don't you? The more chaos, the more fun. But a lot of people have stood in line and walked a long ways to get to this fireworks display. And I am just enjoying it from the car, air conditioned car. I hope I don't run into massive crowds of people. Uh, the, uh, I don't know if the dogs will enjoy it. One dog will. Mr. Chaos here. Right? The other one's already shivering in the back. Right, Stella? Where are you? Come here. Stella. She's right behind me. Are you hiding, right? She's as low as she can get down in the bottom of the car. Oh, uh, what's going on here? All right. If I knew these people weren't going to go, I wouldn't have went. If that makes any good sense to you. There's like police stopping everything. I probably went the wrong way here. Everybody's blocking everything. Oh, it's not everybody's blocking everything. It's the police are blocking everything. Jimmy will sleep right through it. Stella back there is crapping her fur. You say crapping her pants, but oh yeah, you can see it from here too. Oh, look at that! You can see it behind us. Ooh ah, people blowing up stuff. There's a giant smoke cloud all the way out across North Kansas City from the fireworks. Back on Delaware Street. Oh, there we go. The line of Betty Ray's. Ice cream. Ice cream. Nom nom nom. And we've made it to the farmer's market. And it's warmish today. Imagine that in July. The dongs are making the most of it. Right there, Dong? Are you making the most of it there, Mr. Timothy? What about you, Miss Stella? How you doing, huh? How you doing there, Dong? Woof woof. See anything good? We're just here waiting on the fam since dogs really aren't supposed to be in the market. They're going to the, uh, I call it the, the crazy market, which is the Asian store. Fish, fish. And, uh, just waiting. Enjoying the day. It's quiet. Whew. It be a warm one. Here comes somebody who's going to kill us all in a hurry. Yay! You won the race. Now collect your prize. Moving. Uh oh. That was interesting. Tried to drive the car over that curb, too tall a curb. Moving the car to be closer to them so they don't have to walk. I could enjoy a stroll through the market though, but I don't know. It looks like it might be, you know, the, the holiday weekend. I don't think it's much this weekend. much going on in there. Oh yeah, we can cut through.
Yep, it's wrapping up for the weekend. Too many people spending their July 4th at the lake. All the vendors are packing it up and a lot of the places just didn't even open. A lot of these stores are all closed. Well, it's after 4 on Sunday, so I think a lot of them just closed. Coconuts, six dollars. Mmm, coconuts. I think a lot of these places just close after four anyway. Well, alrighty. Rather than being borsh boorish and backlit, I'm just gonna end this here. Woohoo!